Hello, everyone. This is Rob Orson with the Princeton County Office of Historic Preservation, and I'm with Kevin Pollock here, our site manager at Bristol Station in Battlefield. Welcome to our second part in our video series commemorating the 159th anniversary of the battle campaign and battle of Second Manassas, one of the largest battles to take place in Northern Virginia. Today, we are commemorating what took place here in the village of Jeffersonton, Virginia, located uh, out here near Fauquier County, Culpeper County. On August 24th, 1862, uh, right here behind this church in these fields behind me, uh, Robert E. Lee with General James Longstreet and Thomas Stonewall Jackson set up a plan to try to get around John Pope's army along the Rappahannock River. And Kevin's going to dive a little bit more into these details. But before Kevin does that, I just want to point out the building behind us is the Jefferson Baptist Church. Uh, built in the 1850s, but the one you see behind us was rebuilt later after the war the same style, same location as that church. And behind this church, if you come visit here in Jeffersonton, there are several Civil War graves from this encampment here in August of 1862, and also some uh, graves here from the fighting that took place here in October 1863 with the Bristow Station campaign. We won't get to Bristow today, but we have two different time periods here represented in Jeffersonton. So Kevin, tell us a little bit about what's going on at this point in August of 1862. So picking up from our last part, taking place at Catlett Station, talking about the events there, Jeb Stewart's raid on the federal supply line there at Catlett Station the night of August 22nd uh, of 1862. As I mentioned there, John Pope had been sparring with Lee across the Rappahannock River for a couple of days, and Lee had constantly been trying to get a lodgment on the north bank of the Rappahannock River to drive Pope away from the northern bank, the strong position that Pope held on the northern bank of the Rappahannock River. Lee knew that the time was ticking, the clock was ticking on him to commence operations while the Army of the Potomac and John Pope's Army of Virginia were still somewhat separate. But some of the dispatches that Stuart captured during his Catlett Station raid indicated that Pope was receiving reinforcements from the Army of the Potomac daily. They were coming up from the area of Fredericksburg and Aquia. So Pope had to keep a, a close connection to Fredericksburg uh, in, a, in order to able those, enable those federal reinforcements to make their way towards his army, uh, again, along the north bank of the Rappahannock River. Pope was also reliant upon the Orange and Alexandria Railroad, his supply line, but it wasn't just his supply line. That was another link that soldiers of the Army of the Potomac coming from the Virginia Peninsula could have used to reach Pope's army along the Rappahannock River. So what that left Robert E. Lee with was realization that he had to move quickly and that all of his attempts to storm across the Rappahannock at this point had been unsuccessful so far. And so what he decided to do was essentially replicate Jeb Stewart's raid of a couple of nights before, but on a much larger scale. And so here on the afternoon of August 24th, 1862, 159 years ago today, somewhere in a wide open field in Jeffersonton, Robert E. Lee, Thomas Stonewall Jackson, James Longstreet, and Jeb Stewart met out in the middle of an open field with just a table, four tents, or excuse me, four chairs, and maps spread out across the table. And what Lee decided upon was to send Jackson's half of the Army of Northern Virginia, close to 25,000 soldiers, on a march around the right end of Pope's line where there was an opening because, again, Pope is trying to keep his connection close to Fredericksburg, and Jackson would march around the right end of Pope's line, get behind Pope's army, and somewhere, wherever Jackson saw fit, possibly at Manassas Junction itself, Jackson was supposed to sever the Orange and Alexandria Railroad and pull then uh, Pope's army away from the Rappahannock River and set it in motion. In the meantime, while Jackson's men were marching, James Longstreet's other half of the army would be remain in position on the south bank of the Rappahannock River, and it would depart its positions here 36 hours, a day and a half, after Jackson's men commenced their march. And so Lee was dividing his army in the face of bold Union numbers along the river itself, but Lee thought this was his really only option that he could take, continuing a series of flank movements around the Union Army, something that Lee had been conducting since he took command of the Army of Northern Virginia outside of Richmond earlier in June uh, of 1862. Stonewall Jackson, upon hearing the plan, very quickly approved it and then informed his commanding general, I will move within the hour. Early the next morning, on August 25th, Jackson's column commenced its famous march around Pope's right flank and ultimately heading towards 
a smaller station, not Manassas Junction, but Bristow Station, where we'll pick up our series next on the evening of August 26th. So stay tuned to our social media accounts, Facebook and YouTube especially, as we continue our series commemorating the 159th anniversary of the Second Manassas Campaign.